today's exciting episode we talk about why I'm saying no to all the jobs that are coming my way and we're talking about basically why I'm leaving Auckland. So for the past five years, I've been running a building business here in Auckland, New Zealand. My partner Jess and I rent a two bedroom apartment so we can be close to the kind of work we like doing. We renovate old houses and make them nice and new again. And because we don't really have a garage or anything like that in this tiny apartment, we rent out this storage unit here. That little life is what I've been filming here since the start of this channel. From zero subscribers to what that many subscribers. In fact, it was all going so well that in January of 2020, Jess quit her job and joined the business full time. Are you, are you like a photographer? Uh, nah, just YouTube, bro. Oh, what's your YouTube channel? Uh, Scott Brown Carpentry. How many subscribers? 109,000. And then, two short months later, as we all know, COVID arrived in New Zealand and uh, everything changed. New Zealand is a pretty small country, right? We've got 5 million people here, but Auckland has 1.5 million. Auckland is the, the main urban centre of New Zealand, like the Tokyo of Japan or the London of England. And just like in Tokyo or London, the house prices in Auckland are much higher than the rest of the country. At the start of 2020, we were renting an even smaller apartment than we currently rent. It was a 45 square meter apartment with like one bedroom and a half a bedroom, I think they called it. And that was around the time that we rented the storage unit. You know, the kind of place I could like do building projects when I didn't have work on or store some wheelbarrows and workbenches and stuff. It worked out really good. But the issue with this place being separate from the apartment meant that as soon as lockdown hit, we couldn't come here. We are in lockdown, essential services, customers only, ring bell for access, da, da, da. we're here to help, please stay safe. All right, well that answers that. That was the entrance to my storage container where my workbench is, my, any material that I had. Thankfully, that lockdown lasted five weeks and then we we're back to a building site and onto a big renovation, but it was the first sign that we really needed to do something about our living situation. A lot of commotion going on here. So this whole time we had in the back of our mind this goal to buy a house, but that was getting increasingly more difficult when the house prices kept going up. Jess, um, Jess was always behind the scenes on the building business, but now she was full time. So all our income was dependent on Scott Brown Carpentry. So as soon as lockdown ended, we went from one job to another, and the main goal was saving money. We thought we were gonna like go and rent something else though. Like the, there was no real intention to leave Auckland at that point. But a few more things happened that kind of changed our mind. Get in there, get in there. I'm trying to position all the different tools for different vehicles as we move. March 2021, we had to move out of that first apartment because it got put on the market and it sold. Keep in mind this is a 48 square meter, one bedroom apartment. It sold for just shy of $700,000. I mean, we're not even in the city here. Like we're in the suburbs. And when the landlord uh, called us and told us that, Jess and I looked at each other and said, we've got to leave Auckland. So we're coming up to where I used to live in this first apartment that sold for a million billion dollars. So there you go there, that building right here. I've looked at one of those estimator websites and apparently the same apartment is now valued at over 900,000. In eight months, this grass is getting to me. Allergies. Finding a place in Auckland is hard enough. Finding a place for the car park, even more difficult. Check this out. See the rubber coming off there? I think it's because 
tends to hit here. Which I think means the height is just right. So when we moved into this place, we thought would be here maybe a year. And then August of this year, the second lockdown, the biggest lockdown, the lockdown that we're still in, started. Hey Jess, you know that apartment? You know that apartment? That what we one? The one that we lived in before this. Mm. That... <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Casual uh, inclusion of Jess here. Um, that apartment that we lived in before this is valued over nine hundred thousand now. I'm. Are you surprised or? What do they say? I'm not surprised, but I'm disappointed. <laughs> nine hundred, did you say? All the things that I talked about at the start of the video is the motivation behind it, and this second long lockdown was like the kick that we needed to make it. I mean, for the record, I've been wanting to move, live somewhere oh, yeah, else yeah, yeah, since yeah. we got back from Scotland. So we came home about five years ago um, from Scotland, which we lived in for a year and a half or so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I wasn't super keen to come home because I really loved it there. And so I thought, oh, you know, rather than just coming back to Auckland, which is what I've lived pretty much my whole life, same with you, it'd be nice to try something else. But I mean, this is where our families were. Ah. This is where families are, and uh, it just made the most sense at the time. Yeah. But, for the record, <laughs> I did suggest this. That's true. From when we got home. <laughs> yeah. And it's comforting to see. You that have, we finally come around. It took five years. Yeah, that's all you need, <laughs> five years. Yeah. As a substitute for moving, we decided to travel around a lot of New Zealand. Just places that we'd kind of neglected, because we'd spent the best part of a decade traveling around the world. We went to Europe and... Well, those places. Scott had never even been to the South Island. I'd never been went there. to Europe. Yeah, I'd never, I'd never been to the South Island before um, flying overseas back to Scotland. So every time we would like land in one of these places in New Zealand, Jess would like be walking down the stairs of the aeroplane and be like, "I could live here." <laughs> so we just got here. Like, what do you? <laughs> one of those places, I said, "Hey, I could live here." And Scott goes, "Oh, you said that about everywhere." I was right. Well, the broken no, no, clock is right you know what? twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. actually, I don't think that's correct. I didn't say that about everywhere. There's some right. places I'd say I really enjoyed visiting and don't know if I could live here. Don't name but them. I'm not <laughs> going to. The place we've chosen to move to, within about 15 minutes of being there, I said, yeah, I could live here. And Scott scoffed at me. Yeah, well. So I, it's I'm hilarious. Skip, it's really funny to me now that... Because that's the one we always use as the example when I said I could live here. Yeah. And that's where we're moving to. <laughs> I guess I'm wrong. I guess, <laughs> I guess I'm wrong. Um, so if you're wrong, that makes me... <laughs> so it's time for a change. And that change is moving to the South Island. So here's New Zealand here. And right here is where I am. That's Auckland. So you got 1.5 million people in that little blob there that squeezed ocean there, ocean there. And then the rest of New Zealand has the remaining three and a half million. And this is the South Island. You've got less people here than you have here. New Zealand's a lot bigger than I think most people think. When, when I used to go to hostels and everything, they'd always have like a world map on the wall. And you'd be lucky if New Zealand was even on the world map. Like, they'd just exclude it, because it's way in the corner. And if they did include it, it was often like, it looked like a sausage or something. It wasn't the, the right shape. So Jess and I have to em empty the apartment here and sort everything out for the moving truck and then go through a border because Auckland is currently locked down, but the rest of the country isn't. So we have to go for a city border. So if you want to see how that works out, stay tuned. Thank you for watching and a special shout out to all the Patreon members for supporting me throughout all of this. Ever since the start of lockdown, I put Patreon up and if you don't know what Patreon is, you join and you can see extra content. There's extra videos and you pay a little bit a month and that gives you that access and it supports us and helps me make videos. And that's hugely helpful in this time while we're turning our lives upside down. And speaking of helpful, thank you to Squarespace, who are the sponsor of this part of this exciting episode. Um, Squarespace helps you build a website. They have awesome templates, they have awesome galleries. It's a drag and drop sort of functionality that makes building a website super easy. 
When we get down to the South Island, we're going to have to change our website to suit the new area. So it's clear that we work there and that's not going to be a problem with Squarespace. Squarespace platform is super easy to use and it looks really good. It looks classy. It looks like you've paid a web designer to build your website. So if you're keen to try it out for yourself, Squarespace also offer a free trial. So you have absolutely nothing to lose. Then once you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com forward slash Scott Brown Carpentry to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And, and this is really helpful, these types of integrations. Squarespace pay us, and that's the extra boost that we kind of needed in order to make such a move. Yeah, you know, it's not easy moving cities and moving your entire business. It's more challenging than it was moving countries. When we moved to Scotland, we were just, you know, the stuff that we had in a backpack. Mm -hmm.